my pottery peeps. So today I am going to make some mandala mugs. I have this idea. I don't know if it'll work, but we're going to give it a try. I have a pound of clay here and I'm going to throw roughly a small tankard size with it. So let me lower you down and we'll get this thrown and then get on to the fun stuff. Yeah, it's really stiff clay. So now I'm just going to open it up. And when I do a tankard style, it's about the bottom. I need to get that bottom to the width that I want. And if you haven't watched my videos before, welcome. I'm Tiffany. I am compressing this bottom and if you'll notice I'm going from the outside back to the inside you just stretch that clay all the way out so compressed I've never had any s cracks once I started doing it this way and then this one's going to get a little swirl in the bottom just for fun a little surprise I'm just going to pull my walls up and I want to, I don't want them to get away from me, so I'm pulling toward the center. I want height on a tankard, so I want to get that clay up. I probably should slow my wheel down. My wheel has one speed, fast and then whatever, however fast I can kick. <laughs> So once I take my foot off the foot bead, I don't, I can't control the speed with my foot bead, I guess is what I'm saying. I control it with, um, by kicking. So now I have some air bubbles, which I expected I would. Since this was a slab, I was using it for slab stuff. And even though you wedge it, sometimes you don't get them all out. Actually, I've got something in this clay. What is that? I've been throwing all day today. And a rock in there. So, okay, so I just took a chunk. I don't know if you can see that in the video. I am actually going to, since I took such a chunk out, I'm going to put some clay back in. It's all the problem solving. I um, tend to collar a lot when I'm doing tankards because I don't want that top to get away from me. And these are fairly thin. This is just a pound of clay and I'm getting quite a lot of height out of it because I'm actually throwing them really thin. So I'm getting the water out of there now. And this is how I do, I get my hand wet, I come in here with my rib, get some water on there, and then I put the rib under there, kind of pull that up a little bit. And then I do like a little bit of an indent right there. And I'll come back with the sponge, soften that down, down, and then a lot of times it'll go back in. Push that out a little bit. I want kind of for my tankards, I like um, 
somewhat of an hourglass shape. Not exactly an hourglass, but close. And the reason that you're seeing variations in this clay is because I think there's some reclaim mixed in with it. So I actually want to give it a little bit more of a waist. If your hands are grabbing, you got to put more water on. I'll come back in with my rib, my metal rib of death. And then I like to use that metal rib to give myself a little bit of a lip on my mugs. It makes the act of drinking out of my mugs much more pleasant because you're channeling the water. Um, the water is, if you have a mug where the rim is going in, um, you tend to spill when you drink. But if you have a mug where the water is, you've got a little bit of a lip coming out, it just flows much nicer when you're drinking. All right, now that I've got it to here, this is starting to be the fun stuff. So this is my slip. Um, this is the color Fires. This is the 6600 black mason stains in my slip. It's about the size of a Greek yogurt or sour cream, or not size, the thickness. And I am loving playing with these slips. Um, and I am going to put this slip all over this mug. I want a black mug. So while it's on the wheel, and you might have to do two coats. So if I have to do two coats, I'm not going to show it um, because it's going to need to dry in between. But I, I put it on fairly heavy, but I won't know until it starts to dry if I'm going to need another coat. So just know that you might need two coats if you try this yourself. One done. Many more to go. Cool. So I will show you the next step when we get there. Okay, you probably have already seen me do a handle before. So these are pulled. And then I uh, round that off and I round that off, flatten both ends. So I'm just going to score that. Score. So they're both scored. Um, if you want to see more of an in-depth video on handles, how I do my handles, I will... There's quite a few of them, actually. Anything that has a mug in it on the picture will probably show that. So let's see if I can do this toward the camera. Um, I leave... Okay, here's a tip. Um, I leave everything on the bat uh, until... I'm finished. So this is soft leather hard. Um, one of the reasons I leave it on the bat is so I don't have to handle the mug. All right. And then because my bats have this little tongue, um, I'm just going to line up right there with the tongue. Okay. Let's see if I can... So I've already put slip on there. I'm just going to dab this with some water. And then I'll put the top on. And I will push that on, but I can already tell that it's going to be too long for this mug. So I am going to cut a little bit off. Okay and then squeeze this, flatten it out. And then just kind of place that there for right now. I use dowels a lot. And one of the things that um, I love dowels for is handles. This is how I put on my handles. 
and then make sure it's straight up and down. And I will just rock that on the bottom. Then I will take a little bit of clay, make myself a tiny coil, dip that in the water, and then I put this little tiny coil right here at the base of the handle. And then I will smooth that in with the little, I've heard people call it a potter's thumb, but it's like a pinky finger. It's, I don't know, to me it's like a baby's little finger, so. So I'll smooth that in, then I'll take my brush, just to make sure that bottom has a good connection. And I'll also bring my brush underneath there. I'll get my finger wet, just kind of smooth all that, and then smooth this on. I like the little flip that I end up with this handle. So it's actually my favorite handle to do. Most of my mugs have this handle, unless I'm doing something special with it, doing a very decorative handle. And then I will make sure that it's got a good connection by bringing a little tool, smooth it again with my brush. And then sometimes I will put a coil in here where it meets the mug. Sometimes I don't. It's just kind of whether I think it's going to need it or not. Just for aesthetics. And then the last thing I do is I clean my handle up. Making sure there's nothing rough on it. I'll bring my I'll kind of look at the handle. It's, so now I'm going to, just because I saw, my handle is actually a little bit wetter than my mug, but I'm going to cover these really well. But since kind of like how that handle looked, this mug is a little shorter. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the rim by throwing in another coil. One thing I don't like for my mugs, I don't like a handle up above the rim. Mainly because I know so many people who hand wash their mugs and then put them upside down to dry. And if you've got the handle up over the rim, it does not fit in your, um, it doesn't look right. It looks wobbly. It's not stable. And so I try personally to have all my handles start below the rim. Just because I'm one of those that um, will wash a mug up or by hand and, and sometimes put it in the cupboard upside down. And I don't like the mugs to wobble or be unstable. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set that one aside for a second. This one I've already done. I'm gonna bring in, I'm gonna wash my hands <laughs> first because touching the mug, I end up getting clay dust on them or Stuff. And I want these to be black. I want the handle black too. So I'm going to bring my slip back in. And I'm going to paint the handle. And that's why I wasn't too worried about all this stuff down here. Because I was going to paint it. So this is just the slip again that I did on the wheel. You could wait, I guess, to paint it after you get the handle on, but it just goes on so much faster with the rotate, rotation of the wheel. Now with slip, you don't want any, like, you need to have this smooth because if there's any raised bits, it's going to dry raised. 
because it's clay. It's not, um, well, underglaze wood too. Um, but this technique that I'm going to show, I don't like underglaze for it because underglaze, if you get it too thick, can blister and uh, um, flake, bloat. Um, let's see, I need another brush. Let's get this one. I think my brush is actually a little too big for this. So we're going to grab this Sumi brush just for these, get these a little bit smoother. And I'm probably going to have to touch this up. So I'll let this first coat dry and then touch up the handle. And then we will wait for this to set up and for the next bit. <laughs> so many bits on this, but um, I guess that's the way it goes when you're doing decorative stuff like this. There's just a lot of steps. But what's nice is when it comes to the glazing stage, I'll just get to be able to dip it and be done. For some reason, I don't mind decorating in the greenware stage. It's my favorite stage, so I don't mind spending the time here, especially if it lessens my time glazing. Okay, so I like that. So I'm going to let that set up, and then we'll be back, and I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. Okay, welcome to Pottery Nights <laughs> with Tiffany. Um, the mugs are ready to do what I'm going to do to them. And so I tried doing mandalas on, um, this is all covered in clay. Of course it is, <laughs> um, on mugs. And I'm going to try it again. And I think I might have worked out why this didn't turn out. I mean, it's pretty, almost looks like a flower um, or orchids or something like that. So the way I did this one, um, I painted the mug with underglaze, black underglaze, and then I used stroking coats to do the mandala. Well, the stroking coats ran in the kiln, as you can see, and didn't give the effect that I'm after. So I've been playing with these guys. Oh my God, quite a few of them done. So I'm using colored slips now because I don't like using, you could try under glazes, but in my experience, when you get under glazes built up too much, um, doesn't matter if it's in um, the greenware stage or the bis stage, when they're fired, they tend to bloat or um, flake or anyway, so they just don't work um, if you have too much underglaze. Brushing, fine, but doing something like this, I mean, I don't know if you can tell, but there's actually texture here. They're raised up. You can feel them. Okay, so I'm doing these with colored slips. I mean, it's clay, it'll fire just like clay. It's just colored clay. So that's what we're gonna do with these mugs. Um, in fact, I've already done these and it's taken me most of the day to do these and I'll give you a picture at the end so you can see them closer. So my setup, Actually, I should probably show you my setup. So, to know more about using mason stains and um, slip, uh, check out Monique in Bonaire. I'll link her channel in the description. Uh, I've learned more from her than anybody else. And, in fact, she told me not to buy all the crazy colors that are offered. She told me to get the primary colors and mix them like they're paints. So I haven't tested them to see if it'll turn out, but I've got a purple and usually mason stains with purples have all burned out for me before, but this is mixing the blue. Let me show you the blue. This delphinium blue, whoops, hold on. Mixing um, my delphinium blue with 
my red. So red and blue makes purple, right? <laughs> and then I have taken the red and mixed it with the white. And hopefully that'll be pink. If not, it'll be a light red. So anyway, those are my colors. And I've taken that delphinium blue, mixed it with the white and lightened it up. I've taken that green, the um, it's an emerald green, 6219, and added white to it and made a lighter green. So those are the colors I'm working with. I also have a mandala set that I bought and, and I will link this also on um, Amazon. And then a whole bunch of bulbs um, that are full of the colored slips. And um, I've also got my cushion and I covered my cushion with um, a sheet because I've got that mug that's got the black slip on it and I did I wanted to minimize it picking up dust and anything that might be on my phone all right so I'm gonna get you set up now and I'll show you what I'm gonna do all right hopefully this will work um, if not, I guess you won't ever see this video. <laughs> um, so I've got my mug here, and I've got my colors, and I've got all these different things. Um, different sizes of things. And since this is going to be black, um, I want to start out with a light color, like a yellow or the white. Um, and I'm just going to dip this in here and start like in the center and I'll probably when I get going I'll explain how I do this to begin with and then one thing I don't like is that suction thing that starts <laughs> but I kind of worked around that and I will explain that as I go too so, um, now it's just a matter of what colors, I mean, it's a bunch of dots. So it's a matter of what colors I'm going to start with. And I think I might actually stick with the, with the white. And the kit that I got comes with all these different stylus, all the different sizes. And so I'm just going to start dotting. It's just a bunch of dots. So it is kind of time consuming, but it's actually very meditative meditative too because you're just doing all these different dots now those of you worried about the peaks because if you let these peaks dry they're going to be sharp and um we don't want anything sharp but i'll show you i figured out a way to fix that as I'm doing this. So my big dots, I have just started doing them with these. My little dots, I use the balls, the slip trailer applicator. And if I don't have it quite the right size, and I've learned that you can't get too fussy with this. Otherwise, it'll drive it crazy. <laughs> it's another one of those that you just kind of go with it. And I can already see, okay, I'm already going to fix something. Because I can see that my center is off. So I could either make, well, you know what? Since my center's off, let's fix it this way. I'm going to take a bigger stylus and I'm just going to make my center bigger so it's more centered. So we will make a bigger dot. And if I don't like it, I'm going to wipe it off. If 
You do need to do this at leather hard. And if you'll notice, I'm trying my best not to handle my mug. I don't want to misshape in my mug. I don't want fingerprints on my mug. That'll probably work. It's not the best circle, but it'll probably work. I've also noticed or found out that it helps to have a sponge nearby to wipe these off so you don't contaminate the colors. All right, so now it's just a matter of what color I do next and where I'm going to go with this. So, let's see. And I do have a I have a pen. <laughs> Where is it? Because I've been doing this pretty much on and off all day. It's taken a while to do these. It takes me about an hour to do one. All right, this is blue in this one. And blue is one of my favorite colors. So I think I'm going to start with blue. And to get centered, just divide the piece. It's actually getting down. I might have to fill it back up. You can go crazy on this stuff. I've also found that it's a really good idea to brace your hand. I have found that um, a couple of times I was bracing my hand on the mug. And you don't want to do that. I'm just dividing my circle and then turning my mug because I don't, like I said, I don't want to handle it too much. All right, so I got blue and I do think I still have a little bit of pink here. And I do wet my applicators and I always test them before I haven't used the paint in a while so and I'm always testing them so now I'm gonna do a row and of course you can follow a pattern um, in that kit I believe there's patterns but you know I kind of like making my step up as I go. That's just me. I never could stay in the lines of a coloring book. Very much like to break my own trail, so to speak. Not a good follower. In fact, my mother had to use reverse psychology on me as a teenager. <laughs> because um, I always wanted to do what I wasn't supposed to do. <laughs> or if you told me I couldn't do it, watch out. All right, so I can already tell that these peaks have dried. Actually, no, they haven't dried enough. But I will keep an eye on the peaks, and then I'm going to routinely go through, and um, I will be knocking them down. All right, let's see. So I got blue, and I got pink, and I... Oh, I got purple over here. So, actually, it's a timing thing, because um, I want to put color on top of these other big dots. Um... But you can't do that if they're still wet. So I will do different dots as I go around. Oh, let's see. Should we add green to this? And if you'll notice, I've got these in little bowls that I've thrown. But time depressors are great stir sticks for your glaze for this. You can wipe them off, keep them up for a little while, and then you just toss them. Let's see. What do we do? Are we going to add green? I think we're going to add green. So, And it's just a matter of changing up the size of your dots. I always start with a smaller dot, and if I need to make it bigger, 
I will go to a bigger size and these small dot, smaller dot, a little bit bigger dot. Nope, I don't think so. I think I want that other size of dot. Because I'm just going to put these in between here. And go around. See why it takes so long? <laughs> And if you mess up, like I said, don't worry about it too much because um, the, the eye, it's going to be so much pattern on this that it fools the eye. So you won't necessarily see a mistake. Except where I do, I see a mistake. Let's see. How am I going to fix it? Lost my little needle. I need to actually like stick that in a sponge. And I do know I'm off center here. So I didn't quite fix that. So now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to fix that. Not off that much. I'm wondering if I. Well, actually, it's off a quarter of an inch. Let's see. I think I need to take some of this off. So it also comes with this thing here, this little rubber scraper. So I'm just going to scrape some of this off. So once again, you get to see me fix something. And of course, I did seven without having to do this. This is the first time I've had to fix one. The minute I turn on the camera, I gotta fix something. The minute you know someone's watching, right? Funny how that works. So far it's coming off pretty good. And it's not taking the black from underneath it. Well, it's taking some, but I can always add the black back in. All right. So what I think needs to happen is this main dot that I messed up on in the beginning has got to come off. And it's been sitting there long enough that it is going to take off the black. But I'm not too worried about that because I'm just going to replace it. I'm just going to be better about putting it in the center. Okay, let me wash out my sponge. So now it's full of slip. And I am going to come in here and see if I can get some of that pink off very carefully. Okay, here is my black. And rather than get a brush, I'm actually just going to apply it with my finger because I don't want to get those other pieces. So 
I also don't want to get it too wet. My black's actually pretty thin. Oh, um, speaking of thickness, thin thickness, you want your slips to do the to be able to do this. You want your slips to be the consistency of sour cream, pudding or sour cream. You want it to be able to stand up on its own. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry. Got a bubble right there in the middle. All right, so you want to let that dry. So I'm just going to disregard that altogether and uh, go to a different part. You know what? Actually, let's go with some yellow. Because I'm thinking my first layer since I did black, and I did black so that um, the colors would pop. So... I'm going to take my marigold. It's marigold and it is um, 6407 is the mason stain. I'm just going to come down here and put a dot. So dividing up my space here. And to keep them even you know like I said <laughs> or like you just witnessed sometimes you don't get them completely even I really hope these colors work since I didn't test them I gotta be nuts for not testing them but I also wanted to see what they would do and I ended up throwing a lot of muck so we'll just have to it theoretically should work, even without testing. <laughs> it should work. I have faith. I have faith that it's going to work. Let's see. What color? I don't know. Okay, this is pink. So pink, yellow, and green. I think I want blue. Yeah, I want blue. So, I'm actually going to come out here and do and I'm just trying to visually gradu graduate the size of the little dots. It's basically just a bunch of dots. Eventually I'd probably try it with doing some slip trailing. But basically that's what we're doing is we're slip trailing, but we're just doing it with dots. And we're making a mandala. I'm hoping this blue will show up on the black. And we won't know until we actually fire them, whether this actually will work or not. Ah! Okay, so it's it at me. So I'm gonna try see if I can't just lift that off. Because the yellow has actually dried a bit. Okay, so I need to fix the yellow. Man, you guys are getting a tutorial because <laughs> I'm making all the mistakes for you. Actually, I think that's the wrong size. I think I used a smaller size. I think I used the purple. So, put that back down. Anytime you put down your applicator, 
make sure you're like knocking it on your bat or whatever you're working on to get the air. out of it so that it doesn't spit at you. Mine are probably gonna, I probably should have refilled them before I started filming because they're getting low. Like I said, I've been out this all day. Oh, kinda like the bigger one though on the end. Come on, Blue, stick with me. All right, since that one got big, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back and make them all big on the end. Okay, two more of the blue. <laughs> Hopefully it'll stick with me here. I need to turn. Dang it. I think I need to turn my phone off. <laughs> This little rubber thing is actually quite handy. Alright, so I'm going to make these ones a little bigger that I started with here. Okay. Alright, so these ones have already dried, so I'm just going to come in with my finger and carefully, without touching the ones that aren't dried, I'm pushing them down. I'm pushing those peaks down. And then I'm going to add some purple. So some of these dots might have three or four dots on top of them in different colors. Makes it kind of fun. So what I like about the idea of doing this with the slip trailing is it um, not only visually, hopefully, <laughs> will be striking, but it'll be tactile. You'll be able to feel these dots to where on this other mug that I did, you cannot feel the dots.
I am going to add some more blue. So you want to put that down so that the air is up here, not here. So that's another reason why I bang it. Actually, and of course, I'm changing my mind. All right, so let's go ahead and go back. Our middle is dry enough to where I can, well, let's see if I can get this more centered. I will tell you that the bigger the circle, the harder it is to make it look like a circle. <laughs> but, okay. And I think I'm too close to that side now. Okay, well, we're going to make it up in the dots. So let's do, I'm going to totally switch up what I was going to do. So didn't really have a plan. Well, I think I'm going to go in with the green. I'm just dividing my circle. Do white or should we do pink? Let's do some pink. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone for a little while, then I'm going to come back to it. Okay, let's see if I can't knock that down a little bit though. These purples not quite ready yet, but I think these ones are. So I'm just going to knock these down, so I can knock down the blue and the yellow that I just did. And knocking them down makes them circular. If you, if they ended up not being circular when you did it, knocking them down will fix that. And this, this gets rid of any sharp points. And if you wait too long, you can't do it. Um, my, my suggestion, if you wait too long, just wait till it completely dries and then scrape off the points. And if you'll notice, those two or those ones right there, they blended. So when it's dry, I'll come in with a, a tool and probably try to scrape some of that away. Right. Now it's just a matter of changing up your colors you know I'm putting the green on the yellow now I 
And you can make these as detailed as you want, as big as you want. You can get carried away. Some of these, I'll show pictures at the end and you'll see what I mean. Actually, I just might wait and, because this video, I'm gonna, this video, I might wait until they're completely done to show. Because it's hard to, well, if the colors don't turn out, you're never gonna see it. <laughs> or you'll see it when I figure out the colors. <laughs> but if the colors do turn out, so I kinda wanna wait to see what happens with the colors. All right, so what color do I want in the middle? I think I want purple. And I do think I need to lighten this up. So this one is going to be put in here. <laughs> because I don't know what I did with that other one. I don't know if my neighbors that are below me, if their basketball is coming through. I hope not. <laughs> I'm so used to it when I'm out here late at night that they're playing basketball. They've got a basketball court down there. But I don't even hear it anymore. So hopefully I can um, mute that. Since I'm up here above them and they're down below me, it's kind of like an amphitheater sometimes. It doesn't bother me though. I love the sound of kids playing. It's just a joyous sound, you know? All right. That really changed the looks of it. But I think I want to, you also got to know when to stop. <laughs> so I'm looking at it. Let's see. Let's go ahead and put some, I think I need more blue. I need to balance my blue. But I need to put it there. So... But I'm also thinking I don't want to do You could probably do this with the mandala tools and not do the slip trailing bottles, but you get better dots with the slip trailing. And since these usually have a lot of little dots, I started out just using the tools and then decided to fill up these bottles. 
So it does require you to have a lot of bottles, but then I, since I teach people how to do stuff, and we've been working on slip trailing, I bought extra. So that's something to consider too. Actually, I want to see. Come on. All right. You know what I want to do? This blue could turn out to be really dark for me, so I think I'm going to add white right next to it to kind of brighten that up in case it does turn out to be too dark next to the black. Well, design won't get totally lost. What's that looks kind of cool. But it is kind of tight right here. So. Probably good to do an audio book, <laughs> watch a movie. I put a movie on though when I'm doing something like this. I have to watch a movie that I know really well. Like Stardust by Neil Gaiman or Indiana Jones or something like that. So that I don't have to watch it. I can just listen to it because I've seen it so many times over the years. That you just know what's happening without... Having to look up. But my favorite audiobooks. Currently listening to the DCI Logan series um, done by J.D. Kirk. I love thrillers and mysteries. And this is a Scottish um, one. But the narrator, Angus King, oh my goodness, he is so good. I've actually downloaded other books based on the narrator. Just I just looked him up. I, it's like I gotta have more of him in my life. <laughs> You'll have to let me know if you guys do the same when you find a really good narrator. It does open you up to um, authors you might not have ever listened to. I found authors. Neil Lancaster is another one that I've listened to because Angus King narrates for him. So there's a recommend. Used to work for Barnes and Noble. <laughs> Recommending books. Because those of you who watch for a long time, watch my videos, um, you will know that um, I'm a USA Today bestselling author. Those of you who haven't been watching, you have now been informed. And this used to be the side hustle. And now it's the main gig because I got stressed out, burnt out, whatever you want to call it. Um... 25, 28 books in like eight years. We'll do that to a person. And I cannot sit down at my computer, even now. It's almost like I've got PTSD against my computer. I physically have to be doing something. But my point on that is that I also work for Barnes & Noble because most writers, you'll find out a lot of writers, if you're a fan of Bridgerton, Julia Quinn, um, who is an amazing woman, um, she worked for Barnes & Noble. So, people who like to write love books. So if you ever want a good recommend, ask a writer. Because... They outread 
most people. Okay, I think we're almost getting there. Looking kind of cool. So I think I need to add something in here. Probably should have looked around to make sure. And there's space all the way around to add these guys. <laughs> so you can see what I mean. You don't have to be too careful here because there's so much going on that any mistakes. And to disappear. Oh, no, I probably have yellow in here. It's hard to tell the difference between the yellow and the white. Hey, puppy dog. Oh, that's the pink. Let's see which. I think that's the yellow. Oh, make sure I don't put my needle down. So I'm going to put some yellow on the green. I probably want to add paint to that too, but I think I'm going to have to wait. Definitely will have to wait until it dries. So at this point, I want to make sure my dots that are dry, that I can push them down. Littler dots dry faster than bigger dots. I'm always checking my fingers too, in case I hit one that was still wet. I don't want to contaminate. But it's amazing these little white dots that I just did, they're already dry, or dry enough for this. They're still wet in the middle, but they're dry enough to push down. And you do need your mugs leather hard for this. Um, if they're too dry, these dots will pop off. I'm also going to slow dry them. I'll have them under plastic for a little while. Just And I think by pressing these dots, it helps them adhere 
they don't pop off. So there I'm going to have to clean up. So I'll go through all of these before they go in the kiln and scrape away a little bit if I don't like them or if they're too messy. But it's almost like the magic happens when you push them down. It's kind of cool. Very satisfying. Almost like not quite as satisfying as pupping, popping um, bubble wrap, but it's up there. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little weird. Okay, that one's still wet. All right, I'm going to leave that alone. And it's just a matter of letting it dry now. So what do you think? Isn't that cool? Can't wait to see it when, because uh, the colors will intensify. So after they um, are fired and glazed, that'll be super cool. Because I do like how the colors turned out on this one. Well, you can't see it. It's probably, hopefully this turns out, but since we're doing it at night, the light might not be the best. So, all right, so I will, be back with you when um, they've been glazed and fired, and I'll show you the results then. Ooh.